everyone. Welcome to PHET Interactive Simulations. This screencast serves the purpose of modeling reversible reactions. A reversible reaction is like a regular reaction that goes from A to B. But this kind of reaction can go in forward or reverse, as shown here by these opposite headed arrows, allowing both A and B to each serve the roles of reactant and product. A real-life example of a reversible reaction is nitrogen and hydrogen combining to form ammonia, and then of course in the reverse direction, ammonia breaking down back into hydrogen and nitrogen. To operate this simulation, first input the amount of molecules to be displayed in each chamber. I'm going to set this reaction at equilibrium with five molecules of A and five molecules of B. I chose equilibrium because it starts off fair and organized, and five molecules of each is a nice small number we can see easily. Now we press start down here. If you wish, you can also choose the temperature in kelvins you want the particles to convert at, which will be displayed on this thermometer as a new particle crosses over to the opposite chamber. Finally, you can control how hot or how cold you want this reaction's environment to be in, just as you would be able to do in a laboratory setting. I stopped recording to reset the timer because it was getting distracting. Let's talk about the activation energy. This simulation provides a variety of details some of which were explained previously. What is very important is the activation energy for each direction of the reaction. The definition of activation energy is the amount of energy required for the reaction to go forward or backwards since we're talking about reversible reactions. For example, the amount of energy that it would take for the molecules in chamber A to convert to B. Right now, both A and B have equal activation energies, but I can change this. Watch as I raise this bar on the left up to the 15th tick mark on the ruler. Now, the ruler lets us know that the activation energy for the molecules in chamber A to convert to chamber B is 10 units of energy because 25, the top tick mark on the ruler, minus 15, the tick mark we set it to, is 10. I left the right bar down and so that's still going to be 17 units of energy for that activation. We now know how temperature plays a huge role. If I run this reaction at a very low temperature, in the long run, B will be more concentrated than A because those molecules will not be able to get over that 17 unit activation energy as easily as the molecules in chamber A can because they only have a 10 unit activation energy. This simulation also shows the scientific fact that energy is a form of heat so increasing the heat of a reaction's environment increases the energy given to that reaction. This reaction is exothermic because of the way I set the bar, that chamber A has less activation energy than chamber B. But I can also change that and make it endothermic. This simulation even provides species information, which is the number of molecules in each chamber as well as their average speed. It also shows energy histograms for the particles, which are the number of particles graphed over kinetic energy and speed. It can show these for each chamber. This simulation does an excellent job modeling reversible reactions, in my opinion. The heat control feature, in my opinion, is the most useful part. I'm going to play some more with it now. Thanks for watching!